Welcome to another stream on Twitch.tv with Offsec Official. My name is Siren. I know it's been a long time. We'll get to that. But my name is Siren, and we're going to be working on a machine today from Offensive Security's Proving Grounds Practice. It's a Windows machine known as Shinzi, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna get to hacking and cracking today. If you're watching this on YouTube, Happy Holidays! Feel free to skip ahead to the 30 minute mark, and that's about where we're going to hard start. In the meantime, let's go ahead and just kind of relax. It's the holidays, it's the end of the week. Uh, you know, have some Q&A in the chat, and uh, then we'll get ready to rock and roll. All right, let's take a look at the chat here. I've got it kind of like pulled up in a side laptop. That way I can check out what's going on. Oh, what siren? Yep. Summers. Summers, Summers. It's so good to see your name. Glad you're back. Glad you're back. Glad you're back. Sharky. First. We got a first time chat from Vibatsi says hello. Hello, Vibatsi. DMNC1500W says, hello, hello, my friend. Hello, Siren, missed your streams, and your cats, too, of course. He's just drinking some water right now. You may hear him uh, running around and, 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 and playing as they do. Let's see here. Top-notch mic quality, not bad. Thank you very much. Hello, how are you? Any tips on OSCP? Because I'm going to go past the exam in probably like four months. What lab or knowledge, man? I would say focus on the PG, uh, or not, not just PG, but focus on TJ Knowles, OSCP prep list. Focus on um, completing that lab range, of course. The DMZ should be completed um, if you want the best chance of success. That's At least that's what I did. And uh, the goddess of hacking is back, Sharky. I don't know about that, but thank you so much, my friend. I appreciate the compliment. Summer says, I'm glad you're back. You've been severely missed. Well, thank you. Noob44P, that's a friendly face. Piesh, another friendly face. Yeah, no, we're going to get some uh, bling bling here today. We're going to get some bling bling here today, and it's going to be a lot of fun. You guys missed me that much? Wow. Well, happy holidays. On behalf of Offensive Security, you'll see we did a little something special here. Shout outs to our graphics designer at Offensive Security. He does wonders. And we got the Christmas lights that are glowing, the Offsec logo. We're doing we're doing really good. Really good here today. So whether you should celebrate Christmas or Hanukkah. Or even if you just enjoy the family and the festivities, happy holidays, and we're really glad to have you. So what we're going to do for the next 30 minutes is just allow people to trickle in. Tell your friends. Siren is live on offensive security, and uh, we're ready to rock and roll. Ready to rock and roll. Again, the name of the machine that we're going to be doing today is a Windows machine on PG practice. So if you have PG practice, make sure to tune into, and I'm going to drop it into the chat, Shenzi. That is the name. Thank you, CS Fortune. I'm glad to be back. Thank you, Long Fist. I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to be back. I'll tell you, we'll get to that in a minute. Why did I leave? You know, what happened? 
Um, I'll tell you. It'll make sense once I tell you. So, um, yeah, it's a Windows box, PG Practice. If you have the subscription, I think it's only 19 bucks a month, you can uh, head on over there, grab the PG Practice subscription, and you're going to have all that off-sex certified material. Those trophy, we, we like to consider them trophy machines for sure. Um, let's see here. How can you suggest Windows Priv Escalations resource? I certainly can. I actually have, you know, that's a good point. Let me go to sirensecurity.io. Oh, I have a few announcements regarding just personal announcements. If you go to my blog, um, then you will notice a few things. One moment, my cat. So yeah, you're going to notice a few things. Um, I'm going to link my blog because this has a Windows Privilege Escalation Guide that's accessible. I made it myself. It's reliable. And uh, you can go to the blog there. For everybody who wanted access to my comment, I've gone ahead and posted that. That is entirely posted. Uh, and you can localize that resource and enjoy it. And I hope it helps you on your future engagements. Aside from that, I believe we had another one. We go to Windows Privilege Escalation to answer their question. This is, use it daily, that's good to hear, P.S. Thank you, there you are, yep, you're welcome. And uh, that is a link to the Windows Privilege Escalation resources on my website. So yeah, uh, we're gonna be going through that today once we get a foothold on this box. Just glad to be back, guys. Glad to be back. So where did I go? It's a really short and simple answer. I've been busy. I've... I had to... I was doing streams every single Friday and making sure these machines were good for you guys you know i want to give you we want to give you the best resource that you know you can get and um i had to just take a break from the streaming to focus on some of my work and here we are here we are here we are but we're back and let's just go ahead and make the official statement while we're at it so this is a holiday special stream come 2023 we are gonna have every friday well not every friday the first friday of each month will be dedicated to another machine so i'll be streaming again through 2023 and i think that'll make for about 12 streams total once a month so by the end of 2023 we'll have about 12 streams up and uh that's totally fine i'm glad you're back thank you summers thank you thank you Yes, they are absolutely still available on YouTube. You can head over to, let me get it. In fact, do we have the bot? I don't know if our bot is integrated right now. Let me just go ahead and grab it for you. The direct link to the playlist that you can bookmark. And it has all the previous machines. If you're new to this, I would highly, highly suggest uh, this is, you know, like one of those things you want to check out. We did, here at Offsec, uh, we did about a year and a half of streaming. Um, that's a lot of machines. And um, th they're all recorded and they're placed on my YouTube channel, as this one will be as well. So, let's see here. Yeah, still available on YouTube. There's the link. DTH, glad to see you, buddy. I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces. Spicy, DTH, just a guy. Welcome back, my friend. Welcome back. You have to excuse me. I am sneezing like something fierce today. Got them allergies. Siren, finally missed you. I missed you guys. I missed being with you guys. I missed, you know, getting some of the newer people into offensive security. 
bringing them on board. I exist on this planet for three reasons, to educate people, to inspire people, and to bring people together. And what better way for OFSEC to do that that key thing than having these public streams where we do walkthroughs with the community, you know, with a cup of coffee and and we're good to go. So if you guys have any questions, I was not able to attend today's office hours. Um, yes, and to drink mochas. Drink your peppermint mochas. It's in season. <laughs> it's in season. So let's see here. Da, 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 da. I'm a big fan of the uh, Starbucks mocha. The, they have like a peppermint holiday Starbucks mocha and it's just ah, chef's kiss. It is so amazing. Delicious. Absolutely delicious. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, now's the time. It looks like we're coming up on 20 minutes. No, oh, I lied. 18 minutes, 18 minutes before the hard start. Before we get, uh, begin this machine, there is something I have never understood on Windows. Why sometimes we use backslash, backslash, and forward slash, forward slash, and sometimes triple backslash for the SMB client, for example. Curax, that is an amazing question. That's a great question. I would highly recommend um, just performing a simple AD query. Try connecting with SMB client do some share. It's going to have like IPC, SMB null sessions. and But before you connect, and here's the trick. Here's how I learned it, Curex. I would connect with SMB client, but I'd have a recording going in Wireshark. That way I could right click it, follow the TCP stream, and see exactly what formatting the protocol expected. And you'll see which backslashes, forward slashes, triple backslashes are necessary, and so on and so forth. Um, it's always important when you're testing UNC Pass or Universal, what is it, Path Controller? UNC Path. UNC Path is a universal naming convention. Excuse me, I might be referring to UPC with UNC. Um, but yeah, look into UNC Pathing. And uh, I think that might answer your question. Oh, yeah, you can see everything off the network with Wireshark, my friend, or TCP. Dump. Absolutely. You know what? 38Y5, real talk, man. real talk. I did not pass the OSCP my first time. I did not. I did not pass the OSCP my first time. And I was so frustrated, I didn't even know if I wanted to attempt it again. But you know what I ended up doing? I waited two to three weeks. I didn't touch anything related to it, and suddenly, after about the week and a half to two week mark, I started to get a kind of itch to to jump back into things, and I just jumped back into the lab range. I did whatever you know, Vulnhub machines I could find, and I geared up the same exact way for the second exam attempt. Make sure you got your carrots, your blue cheese. That way you got a good snack that's healthy. You're getting those core vitamins. And uh, minus the blue cheese, that's just delicious. But, you know, you get what you get. Get your energy drinks and, and make sure that you're totally focused. Don't spend too much time on one machine. I cannot emphasize that enough. Do not spend too much time on one machine on the exam. You want to acknowledge like when you're down a rabbit hole and i'm telling you 
move on to make progress. It's absolute progress if you can move on to another machine, get a complete scan, a script scan down of it, you know, or a lightweight scan, whatever it may be. And then suddenly you have a fresh approach and, um, and so on. Oh my god, it's Siren. Oh my god, it's Wally W4. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So that's my personal advice on the exam, my friend, and best of luck to you when you do retake it. I bet you got this. I bet you got this. Remember all that AED stuff? I know it's it's in the cybersecurity sphere these days. Just remember a core principle with Active Directory. In order to exploit Active Directory, you're going to need a foothold first. There's reasons for that. And um, you'll see. Once you get down Active Directory and put the puzzle together, it'll all come together crystal clear. I don't know that I can give any particular hints or walkthroughs on AD, Active Directory, but, you know, I love to help. And I want to show you guys something rather remarkable that I think everybody who is watching this chat should, with complete absolution, bookmark this. Just give me one moment and I'm going to pull it up. Almost got it, almost got it. Un momento, por favor. And pulling it up. Now, this is a link that I fundamentally think is going to help everybody here who's concerned with Active Directory. It certainly helped me. And um, I want to make sure that it can help the rest of the community as well. That way, we're not so intimidated. And if you are intimidated by the image, make this like your marker, you know? Make this like the thing that you go in and you tackle these concepts on our, our AD network in the lab. And uh, that's, the ink, that's the link there. I couldn't upload it quicker anywhere other than Discord. But that's the long Discord link. And it's Pentest AD Black Box. So definitely a link that you guys are wanna keep uh, are gonna wanna keep around. First time chat from Tokyo Katai Ka Tokyo Katai. Tokyo Katai. Hello, welcome to the stream. And uh Welcome to the chat, and we hope you enjoy your time. If you're new to this in science and technology, under the science and technology section of Twitch, then by all means, there's no need to follow along every step of the way. This is all going to be uploaded to the Offensive Security's official YouTube channel. We're going to make sure it's there for you as a resource into the future. Always, all these walkthroughs, these walkthroughs, these machines are nothing but the absolute best source of continued experience that you can get. Keep nailing these machines, keep following along the mindset and the methodology that we teach throughout our courses, and I am telling you, we will make you into a Navy SEAL of Kraken. There you go. Share the image again. Shout outs to the individuals who uh, went ahead and put that together because that was a massive feat. 
That's like the AD mind map of all AD mind maps, my friend. It's almost a rule. And it's all and it's chronological. Good God, you know? And it's chronological. It may be overwhelming. But let's face it, when you're in the lab and you want to run various things, you need options. That's a good resource. P. Summers says, I feel like Siren could talk me through disarming a bomb. You know what? If I was trained in those things, I bet you I could. No, I was not out because of surgery, although I did have a lot of dentistry work done, not just a cleaning or something. I had, good God, two root canals for a couple of weeks. I had fillings that fell out, like... It's it's been a disaster as far as my mouth is concerned. Good news is the last visit cleared it all up, and they put the nice stuff in there too as far as filament goes. So it's like I got a new tooth, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, as far as the clock is concerned, guys, if you want to launch the machine Shinzi on PG practice. then that is what we're doing today it's starting in nine minutes you could hit the play button open the lid on your laptop and you're good to go thank you very much for looking out for my health wally very much appreciate that for a linux pen test do you mean system hardening i.e. system exists on infrastructure, they want you to go in for a week, make sure that there's no priv -esk from a low, like www data or a low privileged user, system hardening. Well, I hope you recover from that there, Camp DR. Jaw surgery is no joke. Is there any way... We can get you a coffee to show our appreciation for your work. I honestly, I appreciate that so much. It's just for one reason or another, I'm just a streamer. For one reason or another, we can't go taking donations here on twitch.tv. Um, and, and, you know, maybe we could, but logistically speaking, that's above me. I do not know. And uh, I, I don't think I'd be taking any any personal stuff there but thank you summers that really does show heart are pg practice boxes similar to oscp real exam dude absolutely we build these things inside and out inside and out based upon all of our breadth of knowledge and and also what's accessible we, we like to rate the machines easy medium hard try harder we got it all so PG practice machines, if you're looking for just quality, then offensive security's PG practice is top notch in my book. And I've tried them all. Don't get me wrong. I've tried hack the ball. And I love their gamification approach and, and all that stuff. But as far as certain techniques and as far as approachability, I feel like uh the PG practice, the list that we have it in, the list format for $19.99 a month is just next to unbeatable compared to what you'd be paying at other places. So that's my personal opinion. <laughs> just my personal opinion. <laughs> I registered an account on Hack the Box the other day and it considered me a script kitty. So I thought that was kind of funny. I almost want to keep it there. I almost want to keep it at that point. Let's see. Um, Rich. Oh, first time chat from Rich Harris. Rich Harris, welcome to the stream. Welcome to Offensive Security's uh, official walkthrough streams here. We're glad to have you. If you guys are just perusing science and technology under twitch.tv and you happen to see our stream pop up, by all means, just stick around. You might learn a thing or two about how penetration testing, offensive security, and ethical hacking. Um, actually, you might get the zeitgeist, the overall feel for it. 
and that's something useful to take away. QX90 says, oh, I have a question on how do you know if the Windows box is just a regular Windows box or an Active Directory domain controller in Active Directory machine? Anybody in the chat want to answer that for me? I like PS's answer. Lightweight direct access protocol running on the target machine. Sounds promising. Sounds promising. An 88 Kerberos port. Here's another trick of the trade, guys. Here's another trick of the trade. As far as networking is concerned, on the download, this is a whisper. As far as networking, TCP, IP, and rules and regulations for setting up networks goes, usually you're going to find the domain controller at the top of the fourth octet. So like 200, 220, 240, or, or yeah, 255, 254. These are the places you're generally going to find them. And if you find LDAP on top of that, you find Kerberos, you know, you find that it's running 53 DNS domain name server, then I think you're in a, then, you know, we can reasonably judge that that's the domain controller. That's how I do it at least. I agree. I agree with Tokyo Katai. There is no stupid question. We've been saying it for decades, man. Almost two decades now. There is no dumb question. You don't have to ask to ask, just ask. Hello, everyone. Excited Siren is back. Bling, bling. My friends, there will be bling, bling today. Also, if you get those SMB scans back, and you can get the, you can enumerate and put the puzzle together that this is the FQDN, this is a subdomain attached to the domain network, you'll be able to put the pieces together. Oh, every other machine that's running 139.445 is looking at uh, corp.think.local? Huh, I need, to, I need to find that machine, you know what I mean? Summers, I like to believe that I provide good answers. But uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. You're absolutely welcome, Kirax90. My pleasure. Yeah, 445-139-5388. Ayo, check out those 10 for, uh, 10445. You know, 10443. Look up those as well. Those are some good discoveries. Um, Sysad may not want it running vanilla, on 139.445 and may cross server message block net BIOS SSN open to a higher port. Oh, Summers, you don't give dumb answers. There's no, no such thing. We're all contributing to the knowledge in InfoSec, 100%. Andy, 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 it is so good to have you, Zero X. Andy, welcome back. Rod Callie, also, welcome back, guys. Noob 44P. I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces before we took our break. So, you know what? It is coming up on the time. It is 4.59, and we're about ready to begin. I'm going to switch to my screen. Everybody can hear me good. You'll see that I've got four Crossways terminals ready to go and uh, with Terminator, as always. And I have in my left side, my left panels, I have the URL of the target machine exported and ready to go for tooling. And as always, I have the IP. 
I've got a file uh, or a directory called vulns for any vulnerable services we might find. Um, just straight out for that purpose alone, absolutely. Files, what, what about any information that we can exfiltrate? It would be useful on a team that if we exfiltrated information before loading it into the report, if we could just have, you know, a make dir info or files or exfil or something like that. So it's a habit that I've kind of got into. Hashes, passwords, users for an individual machine. And uh, let's take a look at the chat. Yeah, no, it's time. Let's go. So here I am in PG practice, and we have Shimzy up. I've got my IP, and I think we're ready to start the in-map scan. Oh, and I believe we need to launch Cherry Tree. Un momento, por favor. Excellent, excellent. And we'll go on up here. I believe we're here. Shinzi, there it is. Got it all prepared. If you guys are interested in having this, um, this is always in the Wireside text from a year and a half ago. Um, I may end up just putting this on a blog post um, and cleaning it up a bit, making it look really nice. And then that way it's just a copy and paste for anybody into their favorite note editor. You know, I, I think that would be a righteous idea. But let, first things first, we got to know what we're dealing with. We got to know what we're dealing with. I'm going to drag over some of these terminals for the time being. And uh, we're, as you know, guys, this is not just me owning a box. This is the difference. I should have stated this at the beginning. The difference between these streams and others is that we take attack vectors directly from the community. So what's it going to be? We have our IP address. We're going to load up nmap. We're going to do dash p dash for 65,535 ports, compliance scan. And what options are we going to tack on here? I see we'd be aggressive. The holiday special. Let's, let's get just super aggressive with this machine. What do you think? What if we do, uh, instead of SC, I'm thinking we do SV. We do a TCP connect scan. And then we tack on dash A. At the target IP tack tack open. Does anybody know why it's useful in the real world to tack on dash dash open at the end of your nmap scans? Can anybody think of why? Not ICMP. It just that's right, Summers. It just shows it means that if nmap doesn't get a reset or doesn't get um, a handshake of any kind, a TCP handshake. It doesn't perform scripts. It doesn't check for service version. It ignores it entirely, and it moves on to other ports in the in the light of saving time, quite frankly, and the only way that's compliance acceptable. So here we go. I just don't use T4. Um, we don't need PN. Can anybody tell me why we don't need PN? What does PN do? Good question. Wally W4, I like it. Good solid question there. Why do we why do we not use PN here? Why do we not need to do that? First off, I can tell you it would increase the length of our scan greatly. Exceptionally. Second of all, no ping. Third of all, PN and ST are very useful. Cough, cough. If you have NMAP and proxy chains and you're pivoted into an internal network, I'm telling you, the dash PN to treat the host as online and attempt a TCP connect scan will get you all the output that you need without all the redundancy. So absolutely remember that one dash pn dash st and that's going to be for your internals where you're pivoted in where you got a foothold yeah not making as much noise on the network what are we at here 45 percent
But we're gonna rattle them all, Thumbers. We're gonna rattle every one of them. With the exceptions of the ones that are locked. They're closed. That's that dash dash open. Don't worry to everybody else who's trickling into the streams a little late, no problem. We're just starting up the nmap scan now, and we're going to have that on Offensive Security's official YouTube channel by the end of the day, within a couple of hours after the stream. And that'll be in the Machine Walkthroughs playlist. Make sure you guys bookmark that one. Especially if you're learning. I like dash V sometimes, but to be honest with you, the reason I don't like dash V is because it clutters my output on my screen. And I like a clean, complete script, TCP, connect, full on scan at the very end that I can just copy and paste. So yeah, it takes a little bit of time. We're on a simulated network after all. This is actually a real network. So yeah. Remember, these are not Volm Hub machines that you can toss up in a local instance, have it on, you know, loop back, local, or your wireless access LAN and um, WLAN. Is TCP Connect better than SIM? No. They are just different. That's a good question. But the difference is one is really for host discovery. If you want to see that one's online and not perform any uh, any port checks whatsoever, it's a great, super quick, lightning quick way. The dash N, uh, or dash SN option, like if you're doing a 192, 168, you tossed up a Volnhub machine. Where is it? Zero the two five four. It would be like in map, um, just dash SN. There are no other arguments. And that would go ahead and show you what DHCP assigned that machine. Very, very lightweight connectivity as well on that. Look at Mike, it's almost done. 87.5%. How do you split your screen shells like that? The answer, my friend, is Terminator. App dash get and install dash yes, Terminator. And you can customize it, add colors, infinite scroll blacks, all the all the super awesome lead stuff that you'd see in Hollywood. You can get it in here. Look in any way you like. And uh, it's super effective, super lightweight. And um, so if you want to open up a horizontal, it's Control Shift L. If you want to open a vertical, it's Control Shift D. Control Shift O and Control Shift D. Save you lots of time. You don't have to right click, split terminal, you know, Control Shift O, Control Shift D. It's taken a minute, but we're going to get it. My guess is we're going to get a good deal of information from this.
Is there really a new Terminator movie coming in 23? Interesting, interesting. Notes are open, just a guy. That's the way, man. Get those notes open. Even just bullet point, you know what I mean? Bullet point. What did I take away from this stream? Bullet point. What did I take away from this stream? Stuff like that. And add that to your own little reference file that you can type, you know, stream reference. Pulls it all out. Way to do it, man. Localize those resources. And if you miss it, it's obviously no problem. Again, this will be on our YouTube channel a couple hours after the stream. Why am I running as root? This is a bit of a personal thing. Um, I am technically logged in, so any of the services I start uh, that don't require root are going to be run as a low-privileged user. But I don't want to be pseudoing every single command, and I'm also not executing code as root that would be particularly nefarious or malicious. So I really have nothing to really worry about here. Um, plus, hackers always rock and root. It, it is known. We don't have time for the pseudo. No time to waste. And boom. Nmap scan is complete. And you know how we... I know it's been a while, but you guys know how we do this. You guys know how we do this. Let's make sure our fonts are correct. References. I like to set it to monospace. Do we know why we set it to monospace font in our notes? Because we're working off of... Oh, there it is, monospace bold. We're good. Because we're working off of a terminal, guys. And any of that output is going to be monospaced anyway. And we want that in our notes, equal spacing. So, let's go ahead and get all of this highlighted. Very excited for the holidays this year. We're going to be going into, uh, I got a Christmas party actually with some family. It is going to be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Very much looking forward to that. So let's go ahead and you know the drill. Let's get to highlighting. Why do we highlight this stuff? Why does Siren take the time, the extra five minutes to ten minutes, to highlight everything? I'll tell you why. Because in an engagement, I don't want walls of white text. I want stuff to stand out clear as day. Helps with learning, helps with organization, helps with identification, helps with identifying low-hanging fruit. I mean, it helps with your initial attack vectors. It, it gets rid of that randomness aspect in your mind where it's like, oh, there's just so much. Well, we're going we're gonna to highlight this. So we found files up. Pretty sweet. I'll highlight that. Looks like Apache 2. Not too worthy to highlight. Most things are running on Apache 2 something. Win64. Because we don't know our target operating system yet, guys. I just know that it's Win64 now. That's all I know. And let's continue here. More NetBIOS SSN 139. More 164 confirmation. More 164 confirmation. And welcome to XAMP. Looks like somebody set up XAMP for Apache, I betcha. I'm going to get rid of the TLS randomness. That way we can concise this a little bit. It is HTTP 1.1, uh, but we're going to you know, make it nice and concise. Welcome to XAMP. Why is that important? Because you can use Windows, open XAMP, and deploy MySQL, MariaDB, whatever it might be, very just with the click of a button. The click of a button, man. Um, we have 445 Microsoft DS. Looks like 3306 MySQL. That looks kind of interesting. And we are getting enumerated protocols back, which I'm going to be honest with you, is promising. I don't usually see that kind of stuff. And that just comes with experience. 540 is unknown. I'm just going to bold, or bold and underline that, italicize. And uh, we have no SSH on this machine. There is zilch. There is nada. But, guys, I say we start with bringing this into a clean version. What do we have? We have port 21, port 80, HTTP, 21, file, we have a file transfer protocol. 
135, we have MSRPC, and that could be useful, especially if it was RPC over uh, HTTP, then we could get some evil SSDP and evil WinRM involved in that. But moving along, um, 139, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to group these, 139445, we're just going to have NetBIOS SSN. And, yep, yep, we got that SMB sys tester. And it looks like we have 443. I'm going to group these so that way we have, you know what I mean, like HTTP and then HTTPS because that is the largest attack surface in the world. Let's group them. And 3306, um, SQL of some kind. And what else do we want to do here? Maybe is it MySQL? Yeah, no, it's MySQL. I think we can deduce that much at least. It's MySQL. And get to highlighting. And then we're going to take community attack vectors. What do you think we should do, guys? What do you think we should do? And then that 540. Unknown. Unknown. There we are. So, dash, dash, Whew. that's the preliminary enumeration. All I see down here, it's guessing Windows XP. I don't think that's the case, but it could be. Um, I'm just going to drop this redundancy down here and see if I can find the OS version through some other methodologies. Oh, we have confirmation of SMB2. Why do I think SMB2? Because if we ever get like 2040 up on a machine, and that's network file share, I'm going to be, you know, trying to mount shares, do things, and I need to be able to specify dash dash SMB ver equal to 2.0. Otherwise, NFS will not communicate. But we don't have that in particular uh, on this machine. Hydra on FTP if anonymous doesn't work. All right, open to suggestions. FTP, let's try anonymous access. Anonymous access? Do we have it? Let's uh, let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. Oh, there is one more thing I would like to run on port 139 and 445. Let's do dash dash script is equal to SMB in shares at the target IP. Let's see if we get it. Did not seem to come out. That's fine. What if we, well, we'll get to that in a minute. We'll get to Enum for Linux, but let's do FTP. FTP at the target IP on 21. Login as anonymous, anonymous. Uh-oh, login failed. So we do not have credentials for this file transfer protocol. It's as simple as an alt tab, no creds. We have no creds. That's it, done. That's done, done, done for the time being. Now what else do we need to do? We can check out 80. We haven't even checked out my favorite port yet. My favorite port. Let's copy it, load it into a web browser, and see what the server is doing. Welcome to XAM. And we saw that from the outside. All right, what do you guys notice here? I, I like the XAM version. In fact, I'm not even going to hesitate. If 80 is running HTTP and XAMP, I'm going to add that version right in parentheses. I like to have the service and the actual version right in front of me. And we're going to paste that as plain text. What do you guys notice on the web page? Tried to blow up the font for you, so as always, it's easy to read. Search exploit, dirt search. Okay, all right. Goodness gracious, lethal guys, lethal. You guys are looking at search exploit, so you know. Search exploit. Make sure you always update that. That's a search exploit dash dash update. But search exploit is definitely an option. I'll italicize and underline that. What else do we got? What else do we got? Maria DB. Okay, I see a PHP info. I can see a PHP info, guys. I'm going to click on that. We have dashboard php info.php. 
what is the primary thing as a web assessor, penetration tester that we are looking for when we see a PHP info? Block twin, quick with the answer. We're looking for the web root known to PHP as the document root, underscore root. And that is cxamp HTTP docs. I'm going to add that in here just underneath. And we'll paste that as plain text. Look at that. We have the web root. Done. In the event that we ever need to place code on the target system, we have it. So that gets read. That's a vector with, with the capability, and things are coming together. So obviously the operating system, right? Or the OS, the Apache environment, system root, C Windows, cmd.exe, supported VBS. Um, it's the operating OS. I don't know if it's going to give us the exact operating system version. What do you think, guys? Maybe clear text creds? Maybe. I, I honestly, like, I mainly come here to check for disabled functions. So disabled, uh, or just type in functions. There are none. That's in our favor. There are no disabled functions. If we ever get execution, then... You know, we have no problems if we ever get PHP execution. So we know the web technology to be PHP. We're going to add that up at the top. We know that the target, our target operating system is Windows X64. We don't know if it's 7, 64, 8, 8.1, not, you know, or not 9, <laughs> but the 10, you know, it, we don't know what that is yet. We don't know what that is yet. Absolutely, we could look at the PHP version as well. But moving on, I'll keep that at search exploit. And let's go back. I see PHP, my admin. Oh no, access is forbidden. So it's a new XAMPP security concept. It's not new, it's been around for many, many years. But they stopped allowing outside access or world or other to PHP my admin and it is restricted if if this was the target machine we would be able case in point to put it at 127001 um, on port 80 forward slash PHP my admin and it would it would come right up but we don't have it here oh no well we can't do PHP default creds I like what you're thinking loose always those default creds but we can't do that, man, because we can't access it. So no go. No go, no go. Edit request header to local host. That is smart. I like what you're thinking. What they're referring to is the X forwarded for header and setting the value to local host. That might work. That might work. That might work. But, you know, I see not too much really happening here. PHP my admin, I don't even know why they include a button, really, if it's just going to be local. But hey, maybe they want it from the web interface locally, I guess. Um, how to's and guides, we don't need any of this. Any of this garbage, we don't need none of that. So what are we going to do? What's the next step on port 80 that we want to do? What's coming up next, guys? Is it WFuzz time? Right back to dirt search? I think so. We need to do directory and files discovery with WFuzz. What else do we need to do? Robots.txt, uh, .svn entries, .ds stores. These are the types of things we need to be on the lookout for. Manual, I would say we already did that. Manual inspection or view the source, Luke. View the source, Luke. I promise you. View the source. This is done. So that's done. Bold and underline. 
And we need to honestly, we need to get into looking into directory and file discovery. That means WFS. Thankfully, I already have the URL loaded, lock loaded, and ready to go. And I'm going to come over to my common, which is available on my blog. I type common. We're just going to go to fuzzing files with my trusty secless. And the op directory is raftlargefiles.txt. Oops, I hit control C and control Z. There we go. Paste it in. And what are we doing here? We're saying wfuzz, we want color in our output. We want color in our output. Our file or data input method is going to come from a file, and that's going to be in, move this over for the time being, suppress that. That's going to be in secless discovery web content raft large files.txt. I don't want to see 99,404 messages, so we're going to hush that code and hit the target URL or environment variable. No different, echo the URL down here. I'm going to paste this again, and I'm just going to change rash, raft, large, blah, 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 raft large files to raft large directories. That way we can hit up you know, the web root for directories and files, as we should, and bring that on over there. See, I think I hit an extra key. There we go. And we let it fly. This is one of them in testers with their feet up. I see CGI, Ben. I do agree. We'll get to that. We'll get to it. We're, let's just get all of it, and then we'll take a look. You know, maybe there's shell shock or something. Oh, no, wait. Shell shock won't work on a, on a Windows machine. So no bueno there. Yeah, sys tester, no shell shock. No shell shock. It's a Windows machine, then. So it's not going to have bash, it's going to have cmd.command.exe. But we got an index, a bunch of miscellaneouses for the HTs. Image, webalizer, PHP my admin, which we already know is restricted. A lot from icons. Uh, it's not looking too promising. Not looking too promising. Can anybody explain to the chat again, why would Shellshock not work? I know we see CGI, Ben. Why might it not work? Because there's no bash. And Shellshock attacks bash. Correct. Correct, Amundo. Okay, let's give this some time. Looking pretty good. We're at skim pickings at the end of our word list. You know, applications.html, that's part of the documentation. You know, what's going through my mind? I don't need any of these HTs. We'll get rid of those later. And I see image, CGI bin, no shell shock. This is a Windows machine. Examples is just going to be more documentation. Uh, Webalizer. I mean, maybe, maybe we get lucky with the Webalizer. Let's see. Access forbidden, we did not. We got the Microsoft on auxiliary. Nothing's really coming back here. Icon size is very big. We can check icons. But that's because it's all documentation, man. All documentation. That's all it is. Yeah, trying the header to localhost. We can certainly try that. I'm going to add that to our two try list. 
you know? What about uh, X forwarded for localhost 127.0.0.1? Hmm. Particularly interesting. Particularly interesting. We still got no users. Nada. Nah. No, no, no. Yeah, nothing's really coming back. It's skim pickings towards the end here, guys. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this for the time being. If I need to do a full completion some other hour, then I will. This is directories. Let's move right along. Getting towards the end of, like, let me just show you how much is really not necessary here. Um, we have two instances of Webalizer. Reflection. We have server status, but that's a 403 forbidden. That's completely useless to us. Licenses, XAMP. I'll keep XAMP around. Uh, some image directories for documentation. The dashboard itself will keep around. Um, examples are going to be... This just comes with experience. You know the frameworks, you know the stuff, and you know what's what. And it helps because you can trim it up and make it easier on yourself as time goes along. I see an error... You know, same amount of return bytes, again, images, just not useful stuff there. And because, well, I'm not going to discredit a CGI bin entirely. In fact, this is a very important concept. Windows can still have CGI bin PowerShell scripts. Cough, cough, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Windows can still have them and, and work out great. So let's see here. I think I may have lost connection. No, we're back. The quality has returned. I think we're good. But uh, you notice how we've cleaned that up. Let's go down to files. That's still going. Nothing coming back. And we're on request 25,000 here, man. If there was some common words or common you know, things going on, we would have found it. But always make sure you're complete with your enumeration. It's just for demonstration purposes and time saving. I'm going to move right along. Save icon, not interested. .ht, no, no. Save icon .ico, ht user. Applications.html is tied to the XAMP. It's just tied to the XAMP demos. Um, ht access .back. Ooh, hold on. Um, go back up to ht access .back. That's a 403, never mind. Thought they may have added a backup there, but no. And all code 130, 1045s, 403s, that's just useless. I think the ones we have are the index. There's a redundant index here. Redundant web directory check or web root check. Um, again, 403 on that HT access. And a fave icon. You see how out of all that, we really only got an index.php? Sometimes that's the way it goes, guys. Sometimes that's the way it goes. I mean, we have PHP my admin. We got a lot more back, I think, from the directories than we did from files. And let's go ahead and move this correspondingly under files as follows and as follows pretty clean assessment of 80s stuff there oh my god is siren back yes i am and welcome clay DMX clay hacks glad to see you buddy welcome my friend i'm gonna highlight these i think they're they could be important oops Control Z, there we go. And Shift Alt F for the foreground, Shift Alt F Enter, Shift Alt F Enter, Shift Alt F Enter. And we'll keep these around. What other things, other ports do we want to look at? Obviously, if we wanted to get aggressive, go down a bit of a rabbit hole, we could fuzz files and directories here. But let's keep it lightweight for the time being. Pirate Mo, first time chat, welcome, buddy. Welcome to Offensive Security's walkthroughs. Excellent, excellent. So here we are. We're back at our Nmap scan. Let's just... That was some enum, am I right? 
Let's come back. Let's look at our master enumeration file. Let's assess what we have. And we're going to keep rocking. I see HTTPS. And you know what? I'm just going to copy the same stuff we did for HTTP. We're going to do for HTTPS. But I, before we jump into HTTPS, actually, I'm going to load it up. I'm going to load it up at least. Is it a different web page? Or is it still XAMPP running on SSL? Okay, it's the same thing running on SSL. You always want to check both. And that is why I add this here. I promise you, there have been machines I've done where I did 80, couldn't figure out why. You know, it wasn't working, and I'm telling you, then I had to do 443. Small file differences can make a difference in our assessments. I think we move on to SMB. Yeah, 443. I Yeah, we're going to get to that. Miss, did I miss an S? No, I didn't. I got HTTPS. What did you mean up here? No, it downgrades to HTTP anyway. That's okay. That's okay. We need to start tackling 139, 445. MSRPC, I'm going to move to the bottom of the list with the unknown. I want to keep 139 and 445. You know, these are these are these are the ones that I got a feeling something is going to come out of. So let's do this. There's a tool present on Kali Linux known as Enum for Linux. Hit that up. Enum for Linux, target IP, go. See what we get back. Did it permit us in being all sessions? No, it does not. Okay. Let's locate smb-enum-shares. What if we try nmap-p139445-script? script equal to smb-enum-shares with the target IP. And let's just try that. It might not come back with anything at all. Too great a misfortune. To grave misfortune. So we didn't get anything back there. Now the name of the machine is Shinzi, which I think is interesting. What else might we be able to do? Crack map execute on SMB. I mean, I'm not running down the range just yet. Um, I may open up Firefox. I can and just try it because I think uh, Chrome or Burp Suite's built-in browser wants to take it down to HTTP. I accept the risk as this is unsafe and accept and continue. Takes us as I suspected right back to the dashboard. PHP my admin still restricted. Okay, so not really much coming on there. Uh, 161 CME SMB client. We could try that, but we don't know any other shares. Like, what if we try to SMB client? Let's echo the IP for my convenience. SMB client at 192.168.59.55 uh, at the IPC share and null session. No bueno. No bueno, no bueno. It's not coming up. What if we do an enum for Linux all at the target IP? Is there any other way we can get those shares or that share information? What about 3306? I like it. I like it. We have the echo IP down here. What we can do is MySQL. We can try for root unauthorized access at the target host. So user root p blank dash h remote host ip and is not allowed to connect from this maria db server rpc dump may it reveal anything i mean it may it may it may rpc dump 
So what what with RPC Tom? What are some options that we might want to include? What are some options we might want to have up and have ready if we're interested in well what we're doing here? Oops, I lost my chat. I got two web browsers. There we go. Maybe crack Mac execute. Emailing users and groups, that is the top priority for me right now, at least. Um, RPC client, maybe. SMB client dash LIP, okay. We could try SMB client dash L at the target IP. I don't know, that doesn't seem to work. Doesn't seem to work, guys. Doesn't seem to work. So, what is uh, what is our our next course of action that we want to take? Okay. I mean, we don't have much from eighty. We don't have much from 443, we still gotta check, right? Right? There's an unknown on 540. I mean, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, I think, at least. Someone was on to something earlier. We use inmap UDP. No, not UDP. Someone was onto something earlier with SMB client. What if we do a dash L? What's that? Dash dash help. SMB client dash H. Why is my SMB client missing? App dash get and install dash yes. SMB client. Oh, I don't even know why it's not on there. That might explain a thing. I apologize for that, guys. Technical difficulty. We'll get that fixed. All right, now let's try my attempt there. Nothing. SMB client, do that dash L is suggested. And we'll do it at the target IP, 192.168.59.55. OK, we have something. What if we supply no password? Bravo, who gave that suggestion? Blocked twin? I like it. I like it, I like it. That's teamwork, guys. Great work. So we have shares back, and I'm already seeing custom content. I'm already seeing it. I'm already seeing it. Crack map asset. Yeah, SMB dash or IP dash dash shares. Yes, it does. Crack map. And I think I have it on this machine. I would never not have crack map exit. That's ready to go. I just try to reserve that for big ranges to each their own though. If it gets you the information, then it gets you the information. So let's go under the respective port, I think, 139, 445, and let's go down to other and paste this in. Take a look. We have an IPC, which is standard, but we also have one that's just sitting there called Shinzi. We also have one there called Shinzi, guys. So what we're going to do, let's clear this out, is attempt a null or a null, an SMB, what's known as an SMB null session on forward slash Shinzi. So what we're going to do is SMB client uh, to here, let's echo the IP. 192.168.59.55 forward slash shinzi dash n for SMB null session. We're in. That is bling bling. That is the good old bling bling. We are in. Something tells me, yep, we got stuff in here. I'm going to exit. I'm going to exit. This is just out of practice. Let's go to the files directory. That way, any information that we exfiltrate 
can be straight in there. We could load it and do a report. You know what I mean? It's super convenient that way. So if I'm retrieving files from FTP or um, whatever it might be, then this is this is what I do. And we have an LS. It's a bit slow, but uh, there it is. I'm going to go ahead and get each one. Get passwords.txt sounds good to me. Get readme. I'll take it. That could be version data on something we need. Something related to a session. Going to get that again. Going to get y.temp. I think you get the premise. We're going to exfiltrate all that we can. And xamp control.ini, that might have something useful in it too. And why? Not command. Okay, no, no. Yeah, I know you could do like get star, but if there's directories in the way, that can. I'm pretty sure with SMB it'll be like, uh uh, can't get star. You have directories here. So that could be wrong. But let's cat y.temp. Why this temp folder? PHP needs it for saving the sessions. So please do not delete it. That means there's a session here. Is there maybe a simulated user we could load into Burp Suite, into our cookies? I'm not seeing it. We got our PHP version, guys. Let's copy that. Big affirm on that web technology version. And we're going to go up here. And do, 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 do. I'm going to put in parentheses just for accuracy. It'll help you in reporting. Coming back to this stuff, I promise. It'll, it'll help. And we're going to cat the big one, cat passwords.txt. Holy cannoli. Okay. My SQL is root. So we have root unauthorized access guaranteed. Guaranteed. We have, um, in fact, why am, why am I doing this? Let's just grab all of this because it's all useful information and it's got numericals. And I'm going to bring it in here. I'm going to highlight it. And we have, in bold, root unauthorized access. That means it could permit root unauthorized access, but local only. That's bad. Bad configuration. We got the new user password WAMP if we really want that. I'm more interested in the admin user. And felt head wall white 357. So immediately, without hesitation, I'm going back to my target machine. I'm nanoing the user files, I'm putting in admin, and I'm going to save that out with no spaces. I'm going to nano passwords, and we're going to load that password into here. Also, I'm going to nano users. I think Shenzi could be a user as well, but we'll have admin first, and then Shenzi. Because I just, I got a hunch, guys. I got a hunch. I got a hunch that's the case. Let's check. Admin creds. We got admin creds. WP login. Heck yeah. Root unauthorized access. Not permitted remotely. If we can get in through loopback, then we'll be good. If we can't, kind of kind of boned in that sense if you get my drift. But yeah, users, got passwords, and look at that. I'm going to add that also to my note file so that we have it in two sources. I'm going to save this with control S. Credentials, I'm pretty sure we're just going to have credentials. I know I like to usually separate it, but we don't know if it's web or system. And we have a users of admin and Shenzi. Now, these cat password or cat password, oh no, that would be in files. Not files, passwords.txt, WordPress, WordPress, WordPress. We found another arrow, WordPress. That means WordPress is running on 80, but we didn't find it. So we didn't find it with a very exceptional sec list, and we didn't find it with our files either. I know, what the heck, right? Right, Piesh? What the heck? Um, I could load it into a word list, but I'm going to be honest. What if we go to dashboard Shinzi? 
object not found. Maybe like cap sensitive. There's got to be like an Easter egg or something. Ooh! Oh, it's that Shimzy. Look at that. So we have WordPress here. I'm not even going to hesitate. That goes in the note file. We now have a link to it. We found freaking WordPress. What is this? What is it? In fact, I'm going to export the new URL. Copy all that. Bring it back. We have a new URL environment variable. As this. And we're going to bring this over. And we're going to look for my WP scan, which is pretty awesome. Let's see what other users we might be able to get back. We can get access to WordPress. I know we can get a shell. We got to get admin access. So enumerate plugins, themes, users at the target URL, disable TLS checks. Very, very straightforward command. Enumerate P, enumerate T, enumerate U. Um, I'm going to skip that for now. Not that you should always, just I'm just going to skip the update for now. Let's see what we get. Just admin. Just admin. You know, another thing we could do, another thing we could do with WordPress that I like to do is an aggressive plugin detection. Let's see if there's any aggressive plugins we need to find. Oh, seems like SSL, Superior Certificate, Remote Key, not okay. Oh, I know. Disable TLS checks. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do is this is going to attempt to brute force anything past WP content for forward slash plugins and it's going to just attempt to brute force any that exist in the known database to see if they're there. Yeah, I'm with you, PS. In the meantime, cat passwords. There we go. Copy. And it's just a hello world. WordPress, let's start writing. Welcome to Shinzi's WordPress. Uh, WP admin. And we'll log in as admin, paste our password, log in, and we are totally in. Remind me later. Does anybody know where we go from here? I can tell you we got code execution. I can tell you that much. I don't think we have to rely on plugins for anything. Because we're in as administrator, we have access to editing the template, which is the point of WordPress. And if we go to tools, the tools, no, appearance, and theme editor, what we can do is edit the 404 page to include executable PHP code. So it's running 2020. So I'm going to select the 404 template. And what we're going to do is add our own entry PHP statement, echo some preservatives, because I like to preserve that terminal monospace output. It's only two lines. And we know from that there are no, if anybody recalls from the PHP info, okay, forward slash dashboard, forward slash PHP info. Uh, well, p dot PHP. And we go to functions, just control F functions, it'll take you there every time. Disabled functions is set to none. There are no disabled functions. So you know where this is going. We're going to add a system statement. Eh, we'll do pass through. And we'll do no particular reason. Get, add some CMD, and boom, you know where this goes. Update file. 
you know where this goes. And then we say a bunch of random characters. That's going to be a 404 not found. Pass through cannot execute a blank command. Well, let's give it one. CMD is equal to ID. Look around. I didn't get it. Maybe I needed to echo it. Maybe it didn't print out for some reason. Maybe it's in the page source. No, it's not. What if we try an LS? Maybe the... Hmm. <laughs> we need to confirm that we're getting code execution. Can anybody tell me a useful tool that I have in my common for evaluating such a thing? We're going to use ping-c3. And I'm going to if config on ton0. We're going to grab the ton0 IP address. TCP dump dash I, any interface, I don't particularly care. Just look for all traffic for ICMP. Okay? Nothing coming through. Well, what if we ping ourselves? I'm going to copy this, move it to our notes, and say code execution verification. So a very lightweight, completely undestructive test to see whether or not we have that. And it doesn't seem to be working. Access denied. Option dash C requires administrative privileges, but it does want, it does want to, um, oh no, wait, it's dash N on Windows, isn't it? Dash N. Oh no, that's, that's Amazon. Why would that even? <laughs> dash N space. Ha-ha! Brilliant! Good job, Angel. Good job, good job. On Windows, it is dash N. So, we're going to do this. I'm going to add that for my notes. It was a dash N. Anyone on my team can copy, paste that into a URL, and bada-boom, bada-bang, evidence of command execution. That is what we like to call bling bling. Bling bling. Now, we're going to go ahead and close this. I know that code execution is working. I'm going to cruise on 9090. I'm going to type rev shells. I'm going to do, we can't do a bash reverse shell, but we know it has PHP. Hmm, what can we do here? We could try for a PHP reverse shell. What do you guys think? We could try for a PHP. Ooh, I got a fun idea. I got a fun idea. Why don't we go a little step further? Let's say MSF Venom dash, well, dash P is PHP, meterpreter, and let's get a reverse TCP meterpreter shell and set our L host equal to if config on ton zero. Copy that. And L port equal to 9090. I think that looks good. We need an equal sign there. And we're going to format that as raw. I just want PHP code. And then we're going to launch up something rather special when it's done. And I can pretty much hide this now. Give that a minute. Excellent. So this will give us no arc selected. Uh, it should be fine. It's just PHP, so let's load up MSF console at the same time, running dual tracks. I'm going to replace my code with this malicious code. So anytime, and update that file. So anytime we load a 404, we should get back a multi-handler. No, you can use... You can use MSF Venom in the interpreter, man. There's nothing stopping you. That's not restricted. You can have unlimited um, of these. You can have unlimited uh, use, exploit, multi, handler. That's it. Yeah, we permit that. No problem. It's just the payload portion of 
MSF console that performs logic, then uh, we'll give you one of those. So let's show options, I guess, and set lhost equal to that. Set our L port equal to 9090. And show payloads. Show me the payloads compatible with the multi-handler. Hint, hint, it's a lot. It's a lot. Payload windows. Let's find one for PHP, dude. Um, in fact, I believe what we can do... Oh, it just shows payloads. Okay, yeah. So what we can do is set payload PHP interpreter reverse TCP. Options, did anything change? Absolutely not. We're going to run that listener. And I'm going to bring this down. And then we're going to reload this page. And wait. And cross our fingers. Does not seem to come back. Oh, end of line. Did we mess up the... Did we mess up the 404? I think we did. I think we did. We may have to go back. This is live. <laughs> We're going to have to go back and create one. MSF Venom, if config on zero. MSF Venom, and we'll say dash P is PHP, interpreter, reverse TCP, L host is equal to 4959. L port is equal to 90.90. Format that is raw. And maybe it has to be at the end. Or maybe it was inside PHP statements. Either way, let's make sure we get this clean. Do you think I missed the PHP? Okay, we'll go back and check that out. That's what I'm thinking too. I think you're right. Copy this. Remove all of this. And paste it here. Update the file and give me shell. It's a WordPress error. Okay. Hmm. PHP open, PHP close. Because I don't see it closing. No socket. Okay. Well, that's particularly interesting. Did I use the wrong payload? You know, I totally could have. Let's take a look. Let's let's learn something from this. MSF Venom dash dash list payloads. Check this out. So we can use MSF Venom dash dash list payloads and watch what happens. These are all the payloads, all of them. And we're not looking for Windows. We're not looking for Linux. We're looking for PHP, PHP bind, PHP interpreter, PHP interpreter reverse TCP. That is what I conducted. PHP interpreter, interpreter reverse TCP. PHP start statement is missing question mark, or I didn't see that. Um, let's take a look-see here. I mean, let's let's try outputting this as shell.php, see if it formats it differently, and see how it goes. And we try, try, try again, guys. We try, we try. And we try again, and that's the way we do it. Okay, cat, let's nano shell.php, copy all of this, remove all of this. Let's try it at the end. This should definitely work to give us an interpreter shell. PHP, I don't know why that's there. Of PHP, Sorka stream is callable as stream. And I'm pretty sure we had a closed PHP, but I don't know why it provided us that otherwise. Let's try it without it because it may expect a continuous sock raw 
stream. Now add this update file and let's try loading this. No luck. No luck, no luck, no luck. What seems to be happening here? What if we try format raw and no output? Let's take a look back at the chat. Where is my hyphen here? There we go. First time chat from Osama, then lagging. PHP reverse shell. You could receive it back on Netcat or even generate a PHP payload using MS. That's what we're working on, buddy. It's already closed. Maybe you don't need that. Yeah, I don't think we do. I think you're right. Copy. Go back. Let's close out of this. Go here. What if I just erase everything and put this here? Update file. Update file successfully. Boom. No! No socket. Maybe I set the port wrong. L port 9090. If config ton O. L port is equal to. L host is equal to. 49.59. Hey, Siren. Long time no see. I've been wondering. We are coming back. Streaming. Well, we're back. Doom die. We're back. Good idea, I think, to erase. Yeah, it did. I mean, it says no socket, which I think is interesting. If I set the payload to PHP interpreter reverse TCP show info and options. Oh, port 90, 90, 49, 59. Clear and run. No socket. What if I close that netcat nlvp on 9090? No socket. So what do you think, guys? What do you think is the uh, is the is the solution here? I swear this should work. Let's open this up. Forty nine fifty five ninety ninety. Anyone want to Google the error message for me? <laughs> no socket on MSF Venom on PHP payload. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. We have the shell correctly. Should be like Shenzi WordPress 2020 404.php, you think? What if we try just directly 404.php? And hit run and load it. No. Doesn't seem to be working. But I know it should, which is super weird. No socket. Super curious. Documentation. You think? I mean, I didn't see one either. So let's try updating file. See if our idea was accurate. Mm, nothing. No socket. Going on PC to type sec, no problem. No problem, no problem. Um, I don't think we have another close statement here, yeah. That's like uh that is it. I think in the event that this happens, what we can do is set up a netcat listener. I think this should work though. What am I missing? I gotta keep trying, I guess. Block Twin was right. Let's see it. What did Block Twin say? Shenzi WordPress. Oh, you want to go the full route? Okay. Yeah, we can go to Shenzi and then um, WP Content. We could certainly try that 404. And themes. 20, 20, 20, 20, and 404.php. 
Oh. It's loading, but no socket. No, because the active theme is 2020, it should definitely work. Like, should definitely. Hmm. What else do you guys think? Delete the initial comments? I don't know. Usually MSFM doesn't require um, any additional stuff like that. I think I know what it might be. Were we on HTTPS? Hold on. Although that could come to play. Shinzi. Yeah. And then that would be here. And then we could go to WP Admin. Are we even logged in there? No, we're not. We're not. See, that is the difference between HTTP and HTTPS. How much do you want to bet? Yep, we had it in HTTPS. Cough, cough. Wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. I hope that maybe some people learn something from that. Let's log back in and presume to er, resume. Same thing we were doing. Does it make sense now, Sis Tester? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Appearance, theme editor, and generate me that raw payload. And I'm just going to add that up here. Makes sense. But you guys see what was happening there. Like I said, sometimes I'll take you guys down a wrong road if I feel that it has something to teach. So, our PHP shell didn't work on 443. Remember that for 80. And what we'll do is hit update file. Needs TLS in the socket. I like the way you're thinking. Boom. And we'll say, give me a shell. That's a 404. No socket! What on earth is even happening? What I was trying to get at was that you may have to make the rev shell without FSOC open as well. Perhaps. Perhaps. Let's remove everything else here. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Silly me. Silly, silly me. Let's update that file. 404. Template. And once that's updated, we'll leave. Boom. Update file. File updated successfully. And Shinzi WP admin. Yes. Yes, you have. No socket. Hmm. You're editing the style CSS. Nope, we're editing the 404 here. I, I caught my thing there. Why is it saying no socket? What What would that mean? What would that mean? I think we're good there. Let's do a full if config. It may not. Ton zero, low. Yeah, 49.50. Hmm. Did the malicious plugin fail? Kind of joined late. That's an interesting concept. I, yeah, so, I mean, we could check out plugins, obviously, but that's just Hello Dolly and Akismet. It's definitely this, and we definitely do have code execution, and we know why Who Am I didn't work. But we might be able to... We might be able to get our shell in a different way. Let's try theme editor. Oh wait, what was the current theme? Active, yeah, is 2020. We could try something different, port 9090. What if we set the L port to um, 1337 and we rerun our thing here, exit this. And we'll say MSFNM again, PHP Meterpreter, 
reverse PC reverse TCP. Let's see MSF Venom dash dash list payloads. It may be the fact that it's staged or not staged is my thinking on the no socket. So what we're gonna do is look at all the PHP payloads. Scrolling on up, PHP Meterpreter Reverse TCP. We have an underscore reverse TCP that I want to try. I want to try it. I want to try it. Boom. And we'll set that port to 1337. I believe the issue is because you use the payload PHP Meter PHP interpreter, but specific the stage version PHP. Okay, let's copy all of this. This yeah, that's what I was saying. Is I think it has something to do between it being staged and not staged. Maybe a little bit of extracurricular activity. Let's CSS. We'll select the 404. Where did we put that 404? 2020 assets include. Ah, there you are, 404. Leave this page. Leave this page at once. Update file. And lo and behold, still not working. We got a. We got this. Let's see, is there a lot? 50 plus, H113. I don't know, guys. What's happening? What is happening? What is happening? Something, I think, fundamental is happening. This should give us a PHP reverse, uh, reverse TCP uh, shell. Let's take a look. You know what I think it might be? Ah. Uh, if it doesn't, you know what I think it might be, guys? Set L port to 443. Set L port to 443. We're going to do my old payload. I'm just going to set the port to 443. Are you guys thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah, could be a firewall. Let's let that go. And options, clear, run, copy. Paste, update, new tab, refresh, and we have a shell. Fact, if we drop into a shell, what if I echo bling bling? Oh no, something appears to have happened. Dun -da -da! We've lost our shell. It was an unstable shell. For some reason or another, it's unstable. I think I know, yeah, it could be Defender. Could be Defender. I like the way you guys are thinking. Terminate the channel. Come on, there we go. Sessions-I to make sure there's nothing else going. Sessions-I or dash K1, killing session one. Okay, what we're going to do this time is run this and watch what I'm going to do here. We're going to pay close attention. This is how we're going to get a stable shell. Actually, let's LPWD or LPWD. PWD. Okay, we're in Shenzi. What we're going to do is make a separate payload that we want to execute that's going to upgrade our shell and give us something stable. So let's MSF Venom back at our notes. At the top, we notice X64. So we're going to say MSF Venom dash P is what? Windows X64. I want a shell reverse TCP. I want shell reverse TCP L host is equal to, oops, 
if config on ton zero, the host is equal to this. L port is equal to 4444. And what else do I want to do? I want to say format that as an exe and output to not a payload.exe. We're going to get our shell, background it, set up a listener, and uh, well, we'll see where this is going. We need to mainly use our interpreter functionality for file transfer, and that is the core portion of this here. If I LLS or LS, you'll see we have not a payload.exe. We'll run this. We grab our shell. We up, we, um, well, let's just upload not a payload.exe. And it is uploaded successfully. We're located in C, XAMP, htdocs, shinzi. Now what we're going to do with is call upon meterpreters execute dash f and remember we're going to need this netcat on nlvp on what was it 4444 so we're going to be popping shells trying to get a stable meterpreter shell may have to do this twice that's okay netcat nlvp on 4444 and if we execute not a payload dot exe should did I bum that up? I think I did. Hmm. Unfortunate. Windows X64 shell reverse TCP. You know what? Let's try another accepted port. It could be this firewall thing. It definitely could be this firewall thing. Generate that and then we'll have upload not a payload.exe. Once that's generated. Reason for x64 instead of interpreter. Reason is, uh, well, I totally think you're right. I think we could go with that. But we're going to upload, um, Exit, yeah, 86, Shikata Ganai. That's usually when checking for bad characters, though. That's uh, something a little different. So what we're going to do, I mean, we could definitely try for this. We could say, like, um, if we NSF Venom, dash, dash, or I actually had Venom Ref. This is why I do this stuff. Shell code generation, PHP shells on Windows x64 that's the one interpreter reverse tcp i agree with you community suggestion let's use this i totally agree set that to 139 not a payload.exe oops and we have that dash p twice boom and then we'll upload that we'll background the shell run the listener after setting this might as well copy it make it go quicker yeah, for future reference. And here we go. Upload not a payload. Background this session. Establish a new listener, but we're going to set the L port to 139. Same IP. Clear that out. We're going to... Well, how could we do this? I could launch another instance of MSF console. Um, Let's try that. I'm going to try something. If we launch another instance of MSF console for a separate handler, I think it should be fine. That way we can do sessions and session interact with two, because you see the two here. We're going to interact with that. We're back to interpreter ls, and we have not a payload.exe, execute dash f, not a payload.exe and we'll use exploit multi handler and set the payload to be Windows X64 interpreter reverse TCP set the L port to be 139 and if config ton zero copy our IP set the our host or L host 
equal to that and options to make sure it looks good and i think we're ready to go hit run listening not a payload sending stage and i'm pretty sure we have a stable shell now we can drag this up bling bling all right so let's do get uid shenzi shenzi we got it guys we got it what if i drop into a shell CD here. Oh, it's a stable one, baby. It's a stable shell. Heck yeah. Well done, everybody. I'm going to quick water break, you know, just get a drink. A lot of people saying, how did this shell become stable and what the hell just happened? What we did is we created our own native Windows X64 payload to launch on our behalf, right? To launch on our behest and send us another meterpreter uh, session, this time one that would be stable rather than just a PHP socket. Because if we notice something, this dies out. Our 404, eventually our web socket will die. So we got around that with port 139 and 445 egress from the network and ingress, and we're, we're here. We're rocking it. What comes next? What comes next? Anybody tell me? Database creds, I like it. I like what we're thinking. System enumeration, user enum, privesc. Privesc is on. Privesc is, is what we're doing. Yep, who am I forward slash priv. So set change notify privilege is enabled. So nothing too, I like to think of it as pseudo on Windows. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary. What's running? Ta task list? Let's take a look. Couple CMDs. That's us. My SQL file villa. So by deduction, it says not applicable. It's really useless. These are running as NT system authority, um, because by any by the inverse property, we can say these are running as Shinzi. These are all running as NT system authority, and that is what we would like. I would like that very much. I would like that very much. So let's uh, begin perusing the system. You need to program files or the uh, program. Can I type today? Files. Your dash a dash o dash q. Login in MySQL. Some people say, okay, okay. I don't know. We'll see what we find. We'll see what we find. Um, just do a dir common UMP ruxum VMware standard PC health check. That's Windows. That's standard. Um, there, let's cd to program files on x86. Wants to go there. Anything out of the ordinary? Anything exotic standing here? Not particularly. cd back to the roof. And let's take a look at the network. I mean, maybe, yeah. netstat dash ton lp. netstat dash ant up. I'm thinking Linux. Netstat. How about we do a netstat and find string listening. Nothing? Okay. Well, nothing's listening on 127.0.0.1. Netstat dash A? I find that hard to believe. There is something listening on, on local. Um, but that seems to be it on the loop back. What if, oh man, what if we go ahead and go down my, my stuff here? Let's echo our username. This will be used for later. Useful later. Username. Shinzi. It's just Shinzi. We've done who am I priv. Um, I mean, there are other things that we can do here. Let's just see through my Windows Privesque check. We could do um, access check, and we could see anything, you know, uh, that perhaps has insecure 
uh, permissions. Uh, let's take a look at net users. So we just have Shinzi, net user Shinzi. Okay, is he a member of any anything in specific? No. Then what I'm going to do is go to XAMP and CD to MySQL. And I think we go to Ben, dir, mysql.exe, dash user root, dash p nothing. Is it going to go? Don't think it is. Hmm. Bummer. No, but we did lose that, so we're going to have to do this. Drop back and do a shell. And go here. Are there any unquoted service pods? I like that. Let's go to... So we'll switch user and stuff. And I'm going to do win post. And what I'm going to do is CD to Windows. CD temp. Or I think I can actually just use global temp. Find out whatever version that is. There we go. App data local temp. And what if instead we find some stuff? Um, do we have WMIC? We certainly do. Okay. Um, so I think I have a WMIC command here that will do this for me. WMIC, WMIC, SC query, find strings. And what we're going to do is just this. We're going to copy this, paste this in. I had, this is the way I do, this is the reason I do it this way. 100%. The reason that I do this way. Type services.txt. And what do we get? Service names. I don't think we're going to, oh, we got a lot back. Let's further do this. Let's further prune this. And that'll be services.txt. And then we'll read services.txt for further truncation and see if there's actually any. No, it doesn't look like there is. Dang. There's no paths. No unquoted bin paths, it looks by the nature of it. Let's see here. Net log on, just a bunch of name pipes. But if we type path.txt, oh, there we are. Okay, so any unquoted bin paths? Does anybody see any? Anybody see any? I see MS. That's Windows Defender, though. Uh, Microsoft Update Health. Virtual Machine. Um. Sad face, yeah, waffle, sad face. But we're not done yet. Um, there are a lot running here. ALG.exe, okay. But it's not an unquoted bin path. Dang. There is another thing that I can check for. I just make it a habit to check these kinds of things. Um, let's add some space here. What I do know, I run a Plex server. Oh, that's cool. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to do a reg query. This is it, on my Windows Privilege Escalation Guide on sirensecurity.io. But we're going to run a reg query on all caps H, K, L, M. And we're going to do software backslash software backslash policies. Microsoft, does anybody know what I'm going for here? Microsoft Windows Installer. Dash V, does anybody know what I'm looking for? A registry query. I'm interested in something that Windows permits known as always install elevated. And let's see. Oh goodness. The system was unable to find it. Let's try that one more time. Reg query HK 
LM. And then we have software policies, Microsoft, what was it? Windows installer. And always install elevated. There it is. Does anybody see what I see? So, yes, value is set to one. Payload MSF Venom uh, dash P as a PHP interpreter reverse TCP. If config ton zero, I'm just going to keep this here because we're going to need it. L host is equal to this. And L port is going to be equal to 443. Let's try that this time. Format as raw. And then I'm going to kill name Ruby if I really have to once this is done because this uses Ruby. Sometimes documentation is your best friend. I agree with that. I do. Then let's drop into MSF console. Grab our payload. Everybody's following. Back into WordPress. Appearance, theme editor, we'll edit the 404. And oh my god, but this works this time around. I apologize. It's been a few months, but we'll we'll get it back running. And we'll update that file. We'll set up a listener there. We may just do a stable netcat shell to be honest. So I got a better idea. Use exploit multi handler. Set payload to PHP interpreter reverse TCP. Set our L host. Set our L port to 9090. No, I think we set that to 443, didn't we? Yes, we did. Clear it. Run it. Oh, I know what happened. Use exploit multi-handler. It didn't pop up. There. Set payload. Set the L host and the L port. Copy this. Windows machines, am I right? So we'll run that. Then we'll come here, update this file, copy this and find some random 404 ASDF, grab that, and it did not work again. Hmm. I wonder why that happened. I just wonder. What if we get rid of everything else in here? And close it. Update file. 443. And we got it. There it was. We needed to close the executive statement. So there, we have our interpreter shell. All we need to do now is get a stable netcat shell. So that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to do msf console dash p windows x64 shell reverse TCP L host is equal to this and L port is equal to well we'll go ahead and set that to 139 I think that should be good format that as an exe call that payload.exe and let's let that rock and then which directory are we in perfect get ready to upload payload.exe and one thing we can do, even though we can't, I can type shell and we'll drop into it and we'll lose it. One thing we can do is execute dash F, right? We can execute dash F payload.exe and set up a netcat listener on port. Uh, what was it? 443? No, that was for that. 
I think it was down 139. On port 139, now we have a netcat listener. The interpreter will execute it. And nothing is happening. Goodness gracious. 139, yeah. I put 139. I'm not sure here, guys. This is a tough one. Let's see. Run start out MSI. We have our payload. What did I mess up here? Windows X64 shell reverse TCP. We've set that. We formatted it to an EXE and we gave it payload.exe. And I should 100% get back a shell. I should 100% get one back. MSF in them. Oh, goodness gracious, you're right. It's been a long day, guys. I apologize. But I'm here to help. I mean, this is pretty, this is pretty, this is a pretty intense machine. Let's be real. This is a pretty intense machine. There it is. And what we'll do is move this to payload 2.exe. Upload payload 2.exe. Execute dash f payload 2.exe with a netcat listener on port 139. And there we go. Who am I? Shenzi. Let's see. Looks good to me. You know what we're going to do in our perfect. The reset worked. So we can go to XAMP. We can go to what's something we can write to HC docs, I guess. And then Shenzi. And what we're going to do is utilize this as our file transfer. And this is going to execute something. So last but not least, we're going to generate one more payload. And this is going to be the one that's going to execute with NT authority. And we're going to put this on port 445. L host is the same. And I think we're going to do this. Payload is going to be Windows X64 Meterpreter. Or do I want to? Because we were having issues with Meterpreter. No, it's not x86. It's x64. I know that. And I think this is what we're going to do. We're going to just do x64 shell reverse TCP. Come back to me on 445 and format that as an MSI. Output that as siren.msi. I don't know what else to call it at this point. And then Fingers crossed here, guys. Fingers crossed. Uh, Yearns Lux says, I'm learning a lot either way. Great teaser for the 2023 stream series. I agree, right? I think we're having a blast. And we'll upload siren.msi. Set up a netcat listener on port 445. And... Drop into, well, we already have a stable shell, so I guess we can move this to the top. Say MSI exec and forward slash I, I believe this is C, XAMP, HT docs, Shinzi, moment of truth, siren.msi, close quotation. We got it, guys. <laughs> Who echo, echo, echo username? Shenzi, who am I? NT authority system. That is bling, bling to the maximum. That is bling, bling. That is the machine owned. And what we're going to do is go to user. I am so sorry, guys, that that took so long. We encountered a few hiccups. But what are we going to note in our notes? What are some takeaway concepts? If always install elevated is permitted, 
yeah, we can do MSI exit forward slash I and the path to the MSI from Venom, right? But this is a all this is almost a one shot deal. So be very careful not to build up zombie MSI exit processes. I think that's one big takeaway. I think that's one big takeaway. The next big takeaway that I'm going to say, and we're going to get this all into Discord as always, is be mindful. This was a machine, man. Be mindful of the ports. Fire, more specifically, we want to be more, we want to be uh, conscious of the fact that there may or may not be a firewall on our target machine. So consider egress, ingress, etc. traffic. Bada boom, bada bing. Like how much else did we learn from this machine? What was our takeaway? I mean, I would localize all of this for my privilege escalation on Windows. Um, what's another thing that we looked at um, and that we got? We can update the 404.php page of a WordPress um, instance to gain cone execution and even an um, interpreter shell for file transfer. Because let's be honest, there is not much nicer than the file transfer of an interpreter shell. What else would you guys say we learned? Check for allowed outbound ports. I'm going to put that under this, just brief. Check for allowed outbound ports. Can you pull up the outbound rules? Yeah. Um, I think that's something like firewall show config or something like that. We'd have to pull that up perhaps another time. But um, this is the takeaway. And what we ended up getting was NT system authority on the machine. So I am going to copy all this and get this all over to you guys. Uh, and then we'll get this uploaded to YouTube. No worries. In the meantime, let's head on over to offensivesecurity.com on port 443. And, oh, that's a bad request, by the way. You have to be 80. So we've got some new courses here. Secure code development is definitely one of them. The Cloud 100. And... Uh, my personal favorite course, because this is the one that I primarily author, the Web 200, if you're interested in the web attack surface. We can also head to forward slash webinars, webinars, and there's an upcoming webinar between Paul Griffin, head of customer success, and Jeremy Miller, our content development manager. So let's close this, close this, close this, back into PG practice. And I'm gonna save this and don't worry, we're gonna get this loaded into Discord for you guys. We're gonna copy the whole thing and cancel on the key ring. And then what we're gonna do is upload this into the Wireside text channel. We're gonna go here, Wireside text, we're going to give the name of the machine, let's say PG Practice, Shenzi. And that is the message. There you go, if anybody needs that. Um, if you need anything else, I'm always here to help people. I really want to encourage people. Um, and that was a rough one, but we got it. We got it, we got it, we got it. So, I am going to switch to this, and on behalf of Offensive Security, thank you for sticking with us, and, and for all the new people, if you're interested, you can head over to OffensiveSecurity.com. Um, don't be afraid to mention me in Discord if you need to ask a question. Great comeback, many thanks. You're so welcome, Murray. Thank you guys for sticking with me. It's all about trying harder. It's all about getting it until it is done until we get that NT shell, until we get root, that is what it is about. 
self-love and positivity. Make sure you're showing appreciation to each other in a world so much full of, of negativity. Always show that appreciation. And I got nothing but love and respect for this community. You guys are so welcome. You are so welcome. Thank you for being here for this holiday special. Whatever you celebrate, happy holidays. And until the first Friday of 2023, that is when I will be streaming again, 4.30 soft start, 5 p.m. hard start Eastern Standard. And uh, we'll be doing another machine. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. And if you would like to give your feedback, by all means, provide feedback to us in uh, Discord. That's a great and excellent place for feedback. And uh, with that, guys, I'm going to say bon voyage. And I'll catch you guys in 2023, first week of January on Friday. Mark it on your calendars. Happy hacking, intruders. <laughs>